And here we go. Uh, this is Flash at dropping a coil on Thursday night, the 16th day of April, 2002. And uh, it's my evening time out here. I'm at 9 o'clock in the evening. And Larry and Rob are back in the States. So Larry's in Missouri, I think. Right, Larry? Yeah, well, yes, yes sir. sir. Okay, and Rob is in the, uh, he's in an undisclosed location in a redneck state called Arkansas. And and the three of us, we've gotten together to try to, to do something different, and that's state-of-the-art energy. So we're going to do dropping a Coil tonight, and uh, first things first, say thanks to Grimnir. Let me go on here and make sure we're connected and I've done my job correctly. Been having some technical difficulties with my computer system. I'm just <laughs> not lucky with all this stuff. But give me a thumbs up, Grim. So let's see. Note to self, anti uh bomb okay. I don't know if we're they can hear us. They didn't say oh, they live. Live. Okay, here we go. We're live. Here is it. So for uh, during the show we still have the chatters going on in the reallibertymedia.com chat room. And some of them will ask a question. So I intervene and try to get it in there without interrupting whoever's talking too badly. <laughs> so this show has been it's been a learning experience plus. <laughs> and we'll we'll try to behave ourselves a little better on the dead air time this week. So for your typing entertainment tonight, you've got Barman and Grimner, Moose Girl, Kate and Ty, Chalcedony, Circolo, hello, honey, uh, Dan Van Meter, duh, me, Frumpy, Frumpy Work, Graham Z, I hope Graham Z's hanging out. I, oh, I, nope, that's the wrong name there. Uh, Java Doctor 2, Prince, Rob Works, Rome's Trust, Number one, <laughs> Vanna White, Weather Dork, The Phantom, Beetle, CC66, Chaskira, Cyborg Noodle, E-Man, Endesiv, Gromit, Jays Nines, Jays, Kiss, Ponsas, Quasimodo, Sock Puppet, Smartass, Steph, uh, Stephen Graff, it is. Yeah, I've got a smaller screen than usual. Bear with me here. The Holiest Roger and Zepix. Thanks, though, Rob. I, I, I really am bad with names, though. Even names I'm reading. Sometimes I just get creative and want to make a new name out of it. For no damn good reason. Right. Yeah. So, tonight, you guys, I'm going to put up the link that you decided to open the show up with. And then I'm going to take a little mute and go make a cup of tea. But uh, let me see if I can get this right. Okay, hold on one more. Groom says he's getting, getting, getting an echo, echo for me. me. Uh-oh. Stop that. Uh, okay. Stop that at once. Okay. How about, How about I now? Do, do, do. There you go. All these checks and... Is that better? Any yeah, yeah, better? How it does? It sounds sounds good, good here. here. Right, but he... Grim's got another thing for the measurement yeah, yeah, going on. Yeah, he's listening on the live, on the live, live show, show broadcast. broadcast. It, it comes, comes out, out different. different. He says, still still like, echo. It is. Bad is it just, just me echoing? echoing? Is this me, me too? too? We just said Rob, so... That's pretty much kind of looks, narrows it down out of the three of us. <laughs> oh, you said, oh, you said it, sounds it sounds like your guests, guests are echoing. echoing. And then and I, I turn, turn my mic down, down a little bit, bit and put my, my head on. on. Oh, yeah, well. Both, 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 both guests, guests are echoing. echoing. So, so it's got to be, be on Flash's, Flash's computer. computer. Mm. Flash, Flash fucked, fucked it up again. Yeah. Open your guests, Flash. Oh, okay. Got it. And uh, Grim will just edit. We'll just start over again. Um, okay. Okay. There we go. 
<laughs> no, we'll just whatever time we're we'll just we'll talk start about over. It's not that bad, bad, I don't think. think. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it is. Or, 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 or not, not whatever. whatever. I don't care. No, right. We'll let Grim decide. But he he usually he uh, the other night my system died while I was live doing my uh, Tuesday show. That you probably yeah. weren't around for it. Yeah, but the last nine minutes, my mic decided to drop. I'm having, I was having this internal conflict, and it, Grim took mm-hmm. a look at it, and there was something about the way it was set up. It should have been something yeah. wasn't disabled that should have been. Should have kept it, your finger out of there. Well, when yeah. I have an internal conflict, I meditate. I don't. <laughs> I call Grim and ask him if he can fix it. Uh, I'm not as deep as you guys, remember? I'm I'm a silver uh-huh. guy. <laughs> Meditate. What what's your favorite meditation anyway? Or do you have one? Okay, now I just, says, I just sit and clear. He says, Okay, got it. So we're all done here. Okay, all right. got it. So do we just continue like nothing went wrong or what? Sounds Maybe good to me. All right, sure. here we go. So what I did was uh, Larry chose a link to start the show with called Magnetic Universe. I posted it in the RLM chat. Thanks, guys. Rob and Larry. There you go, Larry. Okay, yeah. Uh, that link actually is was posted by those folks but it takes you directly to a PDF of the Daniel Davis Manual of Magnetism. Oh, yeah. Written, written in 1842. Uh, this is where Ed Leedskownen learned everything that he knew. It's, it's a college version of magnetic energy by Leedskownen in the first section of it, and it's three sections long. It covers magnetic electricity, thermal electricity, and hydrodynamics. So okay. it, it's really a, a real educational book to read. It will teach you how to make your own magnets. It will teach you the proper procedure and even the direction to face to get the most powerful magnets. The sure. the Earth's magnetic field is really strong, as any forger will tell you. If you're forging, say, a long blade, a sword, and your horizontal tank, uh, cooling tank, quenching tank, is not set exactly to north and south, that blade will bend toward magnetic north. Uh-huh. So uh, there's a field there whether you know about it or not. Right. But this book will explain all of the questions that you never even knew you didn't know about, about magnetism. The unknown unknowns. Yes, indeed. It's like having their first job. You don't even know what you need to ask yet. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I've actually started on this before and got a good ways into it and then got distracted from it and never went back. I I really enjoyed it. And every time you read it, you'll get something new. Uh, and if you're if you get bored during the how to make the magnet section, just flip on back a few pages. It gets better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's 238 pages. <laughs> so, I hear Flash laughing. Flash, if you read that book and understood it, you'd know more than me. Oh, I I probably would. That's probably why I don't. I, I don't have that kind of interest. Well, the, this electricity, is to me, is so technical when you really look at it. And I think I've got a, a, enough of an understanding to make decisions where I'm at now without going any further. But there's a lot of people that are interested in it. So I thought of doing this show with you guys. Because I I think of weird stuff that, hey, you might not think of because you know the right way to do it. (laughs) (laughs) 
you, you know, because you, you got to make mistakes in experimenting. I mean, that's just the nature of the idea, isn't it? Right. If you don't well, make mistakes, you're not doing it right. Okay, and this show is a, an experiment for me in completely. I have no idea week to week what we're going to do, but we're going to do something. <laughs> Yeah, and then, and we then, we didn't have a clue what we were going to do this morning. I mean, the powers that be didn't deliver the wire that Rob needed on time, so he's behind yeah. on his plan. And then he thought, oh, well, what are we going to have a talk about? And I thought, if we have a few ideas going on, that Larry could tell us a couple of stories, right? So what I want to know about right now is, when in your electrical universe thing that you got through to where you're at now, did magnetics slap you in the face one day and go, hey, what about me? Or were they always integral parts that worked together? When I was about uh, 13, 14 years old, my dad had a workshop in the basement. And... On on Mr. Wizard, which was a science TV program for children, he showed how to wrap a nail with a little bit of wire and put it between some other nails and put a horseshoe magnet around it and make it turn around. Yeah. And I said, Dad, I want to do that. And so we went downstairs and put one of those together, and sure enough, it turned around. And Dad said, did you know that that's producing electricity? And I said, no, it's just turning around. And so we hooked a 12-volt light bulb to it. And it lit the light bulb up. It wasn't real bright, but it lit the light bulb up. And then he says, you know, you can make it turn faster by putting another magnet on it. And so we did. And it brightened up that 12-volt light bulb, uh, not full bright, but bright enough that you could see in that area. And it ran probably for a year and a half before we took it down so we could use the table for other things. Wow. So I've been really thrilled with what magnets can do for a long time. I've put so many blood blisters on my fingers from magnets snapping together and biting me. Uh, yeah. Bunch. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Wow. So it, so you're saying that magnetism came first and then electricity later? Yeah. I, okay. All right. Yeah. My sure dad was that. an electrician. My dad was an electrician. I never saw anything electrical that he could not do. Okay. Uh, yeah. and, and he... He was always a big stickler on why. It's okay to know that you got to put the black wires together and the white wires together. Uh -huh. But why? What What is it doing? And he always taught me the why of things. That's cool. My That's... best buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Then how old were you before you started to apply the the two together, where they worked as a team instead of being two different exact, you know, two different things? Well, it seems I, like you you've worked them together to work as a team. Or am I wrong I, on this idea? Well, I I went from that phase to a chemical phase. Uh, back in those days, they sold chemistry sets with enough stuff in them to make nitroglycerin which I did, uh, blew, <laughs> blew a chunk off the back driveway with it and a BB gun. Uh, I, I used to make aluminum sulfate and boil crawdads in it that I captured from the creek. Uh, so, And that was that phase. I went from that phase into solar energy and actually created the inverted solar furnace that they used to burn down a Roman fleet at the flight of an arrow back in, like, 54 B.C. or something like that. And that was just an inverted solar furnace with a, a concave lens in it 
to let out the yellow end of the spectrum, which is the hottest, mm -hmm. and a magnifying lens so that, that moved so that you could adjust the focal point. Mm -hmm. That was a fun toy. I burnt the bottom of Dad's fence off with that and <laughs> had to mow lawns until I could replace it. <laughs> Larry the Terror, I swear. <laughs> I, I had a similar reputation, but just for different kind of experiments. <laughs> Man, My experimenting shot. was reckless. <laughs> we shot bows and arrows in the backyard and threw knives and all the things the kids do. Yeah, well, that's the point, is my father was a country kid, so he got city-fied. But it, as I was getting to be a teenager, he still had a little bit of kid left in him. And uh, we'd sit we'd sit in the living room with BB guns and shoot at the car in the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, well, then he, the, you know, he missed and hit the window in the neighbor's house. Okay. We had, yeah, we had to stop. <laughs> and he was, he was sure it was him too. He says, "No, I, I, I know, I just did that." And I went, "Oh man, she's gonna be so mad." Hope nobody was in the room get shot with a BB through a window. Right. You know, but that's the kind of crazy. That was my normal, and everybody else was terrified of my father, but I was. <laughs> I, I knew he was a psycho for a long time. It was no news to me. But, you know, that kind of life where you did stuff, it was crazy maybe, but hell, at least we lived. No, we, we didn't hide inside mm -hmm. from, from the sun because <laughs> we, we could catch a cold. <laughs> so, right. anyway, sorry about that, guys. I couldn't resist. All right. But now we've got. Larry's gone in and given us a little bit more background, too, because you, you figured because we weren't going to go on about the, the wire for the program, we wouldn't have nothing else to do. Guess what? Okay, now watch. Watch this. I, I think I can get Larry going on this one. And, and I'm going to do it by telling him I was introduced to Nikola Tesla when I was 27 or maybe 28 years old. And I was working for a guy that was uh, off uh, off a lot, another guy's license. He was an electrician. So he's using another guy's license to even work. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. But uh, he had this videotape called Nikola Tesla, Man Out of Time. It was on VHS cassette. And he introduced me to Nikola Tesla that night. I went, wow, that's unbelievable. <laughs> And it started me at least to where I could understand what you're saying and the stuff that you talk about. Tell us about that. Well, I'm, that's what I'm saying to you is to, what little scratch of Tesla that I got was enough to make sense of some of the, the technical stuff you talk about. Tesla's most, one of my original heroes. Yeah, and most of this stuff, at some level, is really common sense to some degree. It's you know? all common sense. Okay. Every single bit of it. If it weren't, I wouldn't be able to do it, because I'm a dummy. Uh, Tesla Tesla started out making his own stuff and buying his stuff from Westinghouse. Because Westinghouse had the place to make it. That's that's the reason Tesla gave him designs and stuff. But in those days, the equipment and the designs were um, the very beginning of that technology. And Tesla was notorious for putting the spark gap on the wrong side of the capacitor in his patent drawing, so be a little bit careful about that. Uh, but what he didn't understand, well, no. What people didn't gather from it is that the frequencies that he was using at the time, some of them were not good. Some of them were healthy. Some of them, like his huge pancake coil he sat next to, 
with the proper frequencies through that that can heal every single malady of the body, every single one of them. So there, there are things that can be done with this. But in the same token, that same machine could kill him instantly. With the wrong frequency. With the wrong frequency, exactly. So if you don't know what frequencies you are dealing with, stay out of them. Do not maintain your potential with those frequencies. Right. And you guys that are testing this stuff, you know maintaining your potential is important when you're testing your boards. But right. don't have your live frequency going through them when you're in contact with them. Uh, let's go over a little bit of that again. Uh, last week we we talked about having your the outside interference on your ground wire. Uh, I want to stress how important it is to have an isolated ground, whether it's just a frame ground, uh, case ground, whatever you want to call it, or an earth ground. If you use an earth ground, it cannot be the same earth ground that your mains power system is on that carries all of the interference from all of the people between you and the initial point in the power company that that is supplied on your circuit so that's not a good thing that's really going to screw up your your test it's going to make your equipment blow out because you get spice through it mm -hmm. so that that isolated ground is is real important, and a rubber mat to stand on, so that you personally are not grounded. And that rubber mat, as well as your shoes, have to be clean. Okay, uh, not especially your shoes if you're on the rubber mat, but the rubber mat's got to be clean. So. Uh, just keep that in mind. You can get mats that you can spray off and wash and stuff, so there's no problem. Uh, and just the, the, a few safety rules for you. You just got to maintain your, your ideas. Go to Royal Rife frequencies on the Internet and pull up a chart that has his frequencies on it. Mm -hmm. So that you know what frequencies are healthy and which ones are not. So if you're going to play with 5430, check it out on the list. See if it's on there for good. If it's not on that list, that's a pretty comprehensive list. Don't be the same frequency as your equipment. Just a word of warning. Uh, back to the show, Ollie. Okay, Larry, but for the notes, uh, look up your frequency. I'm going to put this in the notes specifically. So I can, I, I didn't write it down, so I didn't catch it. Yeah, RIFE, R-I-F-E. Oh, okay, capital letters or just... I got it, Flash. Yeah. R-I-F-E, -R capital letters, right? Yeah, I posted it. So, oh, okay. Oh, thank there you. There you go, even better. Um then I'll just quit typing and go back to Larry, and I'll just post it. Yeah, those those live frequencies will will give you you guys that are playing with and trying to learn what frequencies are healthy, just through experimentation. This list will give you a lot of information and maybe save you some problems. Uh, I don't know how I got up. Oh, on Tesla stuff. Yeah. Uh, but some, <laughs> some, all right. I'm an airhead, sorry. Oh, have some fun for crying out loud. So, some of the major transformers that he used and built, getting between those transformers in the field that they create would be harmful to you. Some of the... Uh, 
like the lightning bolt power transmission that was just for show that system if you switch the ground and the hot lead on it that system generates power rather than uses power so right if if you understand why it's working then you can can get a good idea of, of how it's working uh and that what he had was great, was phenomenal. Everything that Tesla did, his communications, his power, everything was super. His, his water valve, a Tesla yeah. pressure valve is, yeah. yeah, it's amazing. With, with that, it puts the spiral on it that Schauberger talks about. It's a good thing. Yep, yep the turbine. Tesla turbine. Tesla turbine, yeah. But there are improvements on everything. Yeah. You can improve stuff. And what what we've done or what we're doing, Rob and, and I right here, is making a new style of coil that is an improvement on the kind of equipment that Tesla had to use in those days in the very beginning of it. He had it all right, and everything works. Now we're just changing some of the parts to make them more efficient. That's yeah. all we're doing. Just tweaking it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I'm putting a new coat of paint on it. Yeah. It's all the same wire. It's all the same principle. It's all an earth battery, just exactly like the pyramids. Yep. Yeah. So, which brings me to the fact that none of this is brand fired new. It's all extremely ancient. We have yeah, we're just anything. reinventing the wheel. Yeah, it, it, the Mandela that the people look at to to meditate. That some of them are coil designs. Oh, yeah, Look at them right. with, with that kind of a, of an eye, and you'll see how they could produce electricity. They <laughs> could even, some of them, produce a plasma event in the, in the center of them. Yeah. So it, it's well, all really neat stuff. I've always said that the way that we sold the, the modern day was to make the old days look so primitive and barbaric. So, the you know, the more that... The more benefit you got out of my new improved whatever Dumihichi, why the more you'd want one. Yeah, my dog's better than your dog. And not only that, but you you don't want your neighbors to have one. You want to be the only guy that has one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that when it goes down, you're the only house in the neighborhood with lights. Okay. What happens then? Well, Get your right. guns ready. So instead of having that kind of future, which is what they're pretty much making possible right before our eyes, they're, you know, they're, it's like a race between it and it. This and that. Hey, some people are uh, very gullible and weak right now, and life is not looking good for them. The states are pulling some real weird, doing some weird political stuff, making businesses go away. It's not very pretty out yeah. there. So, wow, how did we get here? <laughs> Were you driving, Rob? Hell no. I'm going to blame Rob. I don't, <laughs> I don't have a license. <laughs> I'm not devious enough. <laughs> oh, wow. I, can you imagine that, that? I guess it must take a, a certain amount of um, wit to perceive the threat as a threat instead of a gift. Because <laughs> a fool and his part are soon moneyed. I mean, a, a, a fool and his money yeah, are soon I, parted. <laughs> yeah. I liked it better the first way. <laughs> the yeah. fool and his part are soon moneyed. <laughs> well, 
Hey, they've got the world is going insane right now. I know you guys are all electrical and stuff, but wow, we've yeah, got all yeah. this. What we have all this good information right at the on the internet. We can all get it, and we're living the way we're living. And I, I for one, do not get it. Well, I've got an explanation for that, and I'm really, really guilty of it. With all this information on the Internet that you can get, everything that you want to know, you should be able to find out. And that's my problem. I don't want to know about enough different stuff. I just want to know about my stuff. And that's what everybody's mindset is. Well, I'm not really interested in electricity, so I'm not going to do that. And I'm really not interested in what they found on Pluto, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, You know, let's look up video games. Let's watch porn. Uh, I I understand, yeah. I'm not arguing. It amazes me. It amazes me, and I really get upset with people for not knowing things, but I'm the same way. I only <laughs> want to know what I want to know. Right. And, and yeah. So it's a matter of trust, right? You have to trust yeah. the other guy. Well, I read a lot of Internet stuff, and I'm telling you, people don't seem to trust anything or anybody, but they're willing to lay down and do what they're told for fear of being uh, imprisoned or fined. And that's not society. That's prison, in case people didn't notice. You know, so, Uh I don't know. As as they just proved, what we're living in is a big prison. You know, they they don't, you only get called a lockdown in prison. Lockdown (laughs) is a prison (laughs) term. Lockdown yeah. is a prison uh, term. Yes, it is. Lockdown is a prison term. <laughs> I got it, Rob. Yeah, I know. Hello, yeah. people. I know. Wake you... the fuck up. Ouch, Rob. It's me. <laughs> I get it. Not directed at you, Flash. You know that. Oh, okay. Just checking. Because, you know, uh, I seen a thing about Denmark on the Fox News the other day for the first time. I never opened a Fox News link about Denmark. It never come up. I made fun of them because I come from America, so I know what an entertainment program is. Anyway, (laughs) I watched this three-minute link, and in three minutes, it just destroyed Denmark. Oh, yeah. It it was the the worst horrid shithole that you could ever imagine living in. Oh, yeah. And then it's right, right. But this is on Fox. Well, then this Danish guy, (laughs) he he's deciphering what they're saying compared to how the Danes really are. And it was just a (laughs) well, yeah. yeah, So if you're, in my opinion of of human life form, if you're a greedy slob, this place isn't for you. Yeah. There you go. That sums it. Everybody else, come on down. You know. Cool. There you go. But fuck the the people in America with their lockdowns and their state laws and you know giving up freedoms willingly is going to hurt them later. We, it's yeah. fine when you want to, but man, when you don't want to, like I don't want to, well then your turn's going to come around on the wheel. Isn't that like electricity, there, Larry? <laughs> yep, it's all one great big circle. When I was little, I thought we had all kinds of freedoms. And I've seen them stripped away from us one by one in the name of the drug war, the war on terror. Uh, yeah. Think about the children. It's not freedom anymore, kids. No. What we had when I was little is a whole lot better than this, and it wasn't freedom back then. No. It's just that everybody thought that the government was there to help them. They'll never lie to us. They can't lie about it. It's on TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, wow. Yeah. Boy, were we taken for a Yeah, we were all brainwashed. We were brainwashed into going to Vietnam. Yep. 
I was just starting to grow up, about 71, too, right in there, 11, 12 years old, making sense of grown-up shit, right? And that's about when the physical, most of the physical Vietnam had ended. They still had troops over there for a few years, but till 75. Yeah. But it's just weird how my adolescence was surrounded by war. Yeah. Where are you from? Where are you from? Africa? South America? No, I'm from L.A. War? What are you talking about? Because we were the invaders, you know? So people have this yeah. stupid fucking idea that <laughs> that the war affects the people that got invaded, but not the invaders. No, that well, maybe not their bosses, but the invaders take a beating. <laughs> and then they get back, and then the, the system uses them up, and they go, well, nice knowing you, buddy. And the cycle has continued to today. <laughs> yeah. It's the same cycle that's been going on forever. Somebody sees something that they want, and they kill somebody to get it. That's, yeah. that's how every country has gained its wealth, by killing somebody else and stealing what they had. Yep. But they call it democracy. <laughs> That's because we all wanted it. <laughs> well, I think if they would have told the truth about the whys, like, you know, where you were talking about why being a major factor, why is not so much important to somebody that wants something. They just want it. Yeah. How, how you supply it to them, as long as they nothing, don't. Yeah, nothing happens to them. Right, Rob? They don't care. <laughs> You know. Now upgrade your cell phone so you get brain cancer faster. I got mine. Fuck y'all. Uh oh, I still don't have one. I'm like so many folks in Indonesia had three or four of them. Yeah, what, brain cancers. No, uh, cell phones. Uh, oh. uh, or are you talking about brain cancer? Yeah, no, cell phones. <laughs> <laughs> He's confusing me with your with your joke. I don't know. I wonder if I got brain cancer. I, I walk to the right one. <laughs> Starting to tilt like the, you know, the thing that walks crooked. That's just one too many beers. I wish. I'll tell you, this new Corona crap, though, it's so, it's so strange for me to walk through a place and people part out of the way. Because I'm so small, people don't usually notice. I'm not in a big, intimidating presence, so now that I've got the coronavirus, man, I can get ten people to move aside so I can go through. <laughs> it's like, wow, it's like I'm going to make the most of this. I hope they keep this thing going for ten or twenty years. <laughs> well, if the if the public is dumb enough to buy it, then do it. There you go. Go with the flow. Because uh, keeping your distance and, you know, like when I go to a bar, I'm kind of strange to some of these people because I go there and I'll sit way where there's nobody. <laughs> and I know everybody that's down at the other end chatting, but I go sit way the fuck alone. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want to take credit for social distancing, but I, I don't think I'll be able to. But I created it way before it was popular. Now I'm just waiting for him to open the bars so I can prove my theory. <laughs> you were social distancing before social distancing was cool? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that amazing? I'm such a social butterfly. I mean, I guess that would right, strike people right. as odd. Oh, crying out. Like, come on. You know, I've slowed down so much in the last 10 years that this uh, <laughs> lockdown crap... It's mostly a story here. And uh, there's never been a mandatory anything. So, but, yeah. been, but the people that are ill, this is the sad part about it to me, right? It's people that are either weak, feel, mentally not strong people. Yeah. Eh, the meek, there you go. Uh, that are, they believe the society has got their back. So they wear a mask because they're afraid of something. And that's the part that bothers me. 
not not that they're wearing them that they were bullied into it based on an exaggeration, you know. Just like we were bullied into buying electricity because nobody ever taught us about Tesla. <laughs> That's why I brought it up earlier that I was well past school before I ever learned about who he was. Why didn't they teach me about him in school? Why don't they just teach you how to make an earth battery in school? I don't remember we that can... class either, no. No, we learned about uh, the potato battery. The... You can get enough power out of the earth in your backyard to power your house. And how would you do that, Larry? With a magic eight ball? Yep, that's it. Shake it up and turn it upside <laughs> down and say, Genie, give me power. No, it's probably man. really that simple, too, if you do the it labor is. to get to it, right? It, well, okay, it is. Well, take us down a story and give us a rundown. How do I write this up in the notes? Uh, what do you want me to call this? How to make Earth, Earth battery, battery 101. Yeah. Or, okay, yeah. Earth battery 101 it is. And then I'm going to mute. And yeah. go, give us a good one on this one. All right. Earth. You need four 10-foot long rods. Two of them copper-clad ground rods. The other two can be steel, uh, iron, Anything that's conductive, you can even use rebar for the other two. Okay. Drive those into the ground uh, until you've got about three feet sticking up mm -hmm. out of the ground. The first one you drive in, uh, we'll call it copper, and it doesn't matter what it's made out of. Just the first one of your pair goes at north okay. at an angle 10 foot away from that you're you're making a big square right. 10 foot away from that at an angle to the east drive in your iron rod okay we'll call it rebar just for conversation go to the south 10 foot away from that one Straight right. south of the north one and drive in the other copper rod. Okay. Go 10 foot away to the west and drive in your other rebar. Right. So you got a perfect square. Got it. Got a perfect in, square. Uh, setting on its edge facing north south. Yeah. Cardinal points. Okay. Get a string and measure the distance going all the way around it. Find okay. the circumference of, the, of that rec, of that square. It should be 40 feet if you just did 10 feet apart. Should be. Just measure it with a string so you don't waste your wire. Right. <clears throat> Cut four pieces of wire that are nine times that length. Okay, so 360 feet? Approximately, yeah. Leave yourself a foot or two on each end of it for connection. Okay. Okay, begin at the North Pole. Put an acorn, some sort of mechanical connection to that ground rod at the okay. top of it, at the very top of it. Okay. Tell us what an acorn is. Uh, it's it's a funny, it's an acorn-shaped clamp that just has a, a V shape in it. It, it. it covers the round part of the pipe and has a it's, V shape. So it's a wire clamp. Side, wire. Yeah, it's a wire clamp. It's a wire clamp that you use to clamp it to the rock. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Take your wire. Go all the way around, north, east, south, west, back to north, and stop. Okay. You're still going to have a whole bunch of wire left over on that one. Go to your east ro your rod, your rebar, 
put the same kind of clamp on the very top of that, attach a wire to it, and go all the way around back to itself and stop. Okay. This this rotation will be under directly under the first one. Okay. Not over it, not twisted with it, under it. Just what like kind of wire? Fingers. Any kind. I use solid wire, but any any kind of wire is fine. Okay. Uh, so, you, so you can take some Romex and split it up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, if it's uh, Larry, THH, Larry, Larry. Yes. Yes. Can I, can I interrupt this without destroying it? Certainly. Okay, because Doug was asking, he needs the equations and the graphics. He says his brain's not getting it with the word. So is there a link, or is there something you can say to instruct him to get this, what he's looking for? Thank you. He's trying to get the equation from the graphic. From which graphic? No, he says, I I need he's equations if and graphics. Oh, He's asking um, if there's a picture of what you're describing. No, there's only my drawings, and I can't show them. I mean, I could show them, but I don't think they show up there in pencil. Do you have anything um, on your Facebook site that would be similar or helpful? No, nothing that shows the Earth batteries. Oh, okay. Well, I tried uh, to help. Uh, we, we tried. Well, Sorry, done. Larry. Okay. Okay, the the idea is to go nine times around from each post, alternating. Right. Okay, that way you're going to have a different post wire below each other, next to each of the rest of them. They're, they're going to go in sequence: north, south, or north, east, south, west, north, east, south, west. And you're going to go around nine times. And keep your wire just like your fingers are, not overlapping, but next to one another. Yeah. Okay. That's going to give you two ends at each post. Right. You'll, have okay. a, you'll have a different potential, just like in a capacitor. This is the cashmere effect. You'll have a different potential between the copper rods and the iron rods, between the copper rods and the copper rods, and between the iron rods and the iron rods. And that's where you get your voltage. Okay. The coil that you're making, one of its circuits are wired in series, and half of its circuits go on each post. You put one of these coils on each of those four posts, that will boost up the amperage. There's your whole system. Run those leads into your house to feed your system. You'll have to run it through an inverter to get AC out of it. Okay, so back up. You run your nine circuits um, from each post, alternating. Yeah, it's like you... nine windings on a coil. Right. And so you end up with a with a, two leads off of each post and you said to hook that up to a coil? Yeah, the coil that you're making. Okay, the eight inch coil. Yeah. An eight inch coil. And so that'll give me four of those, that'll give me twelve volts with uh hundred and twenty amps. Yep. Is that what, am I figuring that right? Yes, you are. So that's 12 volts at 120 amps. And you've probably got a 100 amp panel in your house. Yeah. So that's, uh, you, one point, you, that's one point four kilowatts. If you got a 200 amp panel in your house, you'll have to go to the, to the 18 inch coil. Okay. The 12 circuit. All right. Well, I got three more donuts to print up. And some more wire to order. <laughs> get, get, get your first one made and do your testing. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll run yeah, through that on the show here. Yep, I was supposed to get my wire on Saturday, so 
I may be giving you a call on Saturday. Yeah. Or Sunday, maybe. I don't know. All right. It's supposed to be nasty here again this weekend. I'm not going fishing. This is like like nerd addiction. Yep. This electricity stuff, because when... When you talk about certain things, even I'm following along. I, I might become be becoming a nerd. Should I worry? Get a little yeah. dense, cat. No, everybody else should. Yep. Once it sets <laughs> in, there ain't no cure for it. Well, well, well. well. Anyways, yeah. so where, oh, there was another link that, you, uh, or yeah, hold on. I'm going to post a link for the show on the RLM chat. I forget what it was called. Hold on. Magnetism particle yeah, dynamic. Yeah, yeah. That is a nice video. Okay. I like right. everybody to watch this. Okay, well, you guys just did a real uh, big math equation, so I figured they might like a little, a little fun stuff now. Yeah, pretty oh, pictures. Fun. All right. So let me. I put it in the notes, and I put it in the RLM chat for them to see. Boink. Here we go. Da, 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 da. I'm not as fast as Rob. I think that was it, right? I put the right one yeah. there. Wait a minute. This no. is Ken, Ken Wheeler's work. Oh, okay. Rob, uh, Rob and me both tried to do it at the same time, but his version came out better. Magnetism particle dynamics. Tell us what the hell that means, Larry. I don't know. Rob seems to know. I don't know nothing. I'm so sad. Okay. Let's let's do just a little bit of visualization before we watch this. I know for a fact that magnets are not physical things. Okay? And I'm not talking about the bar magnet. I'm talking about the field that comes out of them. But when you visualize that field, it twists. It's a tornado. Each little magnet, if it comes out one end, it's got one spin to it as it heads around to the other end. Comes out the other end, it's got another different twist to it, the opposite direction, and it goes around back to the top, just like a DNA spiral. When it gets to the middle, the nine point, the zero point, energy. That's where that magnet is converted to the opposite twist and shot out the other end. So just visualize magnets as being little particles, which they're not, that go round from the top to the bottom. And the stronger the magnet is, the farther out each little row of these things can go. Magnetic field has flux lines. That's where the most it, magnetic bands, strong magnetic field, weak magnetic field, strong magnetic field, weak magnetic field, they alternate all the way out to the maximum strength of a magnet. Huh. So just little things to think about while you're watching this. This is an excellent, excellent video to show you how the magnetic fields interact. Well, I've got a technical Bob question that came to my mind. Okay. Wow. I don't even know if this is going to make sense, all right? But I'm going to give it a try, Larry. But I, well, you were talking about that magnetic field. I'm thinking I'm looking at stuff, and it's being interpreted in my brain as whatever the hell it is that I see, right? Yeah. Okay, but... I I can't do this for everybody. I can only do it for myself. Well, how do I know that you see what I see? Ah, watch this video and you'll see what I see. Really? Well, yeah, I'll the you man for it. The man that just wanted graphics and and pictures, study this video. Oh, this well, I have a really copy. Good. I threw it in the notes as well. Excellent. In, in a few minutes, we'll talk a little bit about David LaPointe. Who? That's another good video to watch. Ah, David LaPointe, Primer okay. Field. All right. Is that in the in the wire notes? Yeah. Look. Okay. Yeah, it's David LaPointe. Okay. I'll go look for that. I'll put it up in the site. 
or Rob will. He's faster than me. It's up there, and it's in your wire. Rec- the Rex research one. Okay. I'll put it in the chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Some something for people to to keep in mind as they're watching this video. This is the way magnetism works in an uninterrupted, uninfluenced singular field. Okay. Right. That that's the Rex. Rex Research. Rex Wheeler, yeah. Okay. Uh, Make uh, sure I had the right link. I don't want to put it the wrong one in the notes. Uh, no, it's the magnetism particle dynamics. It's that one. Oh, I already got that. Okay, you went The back. YouTube video is right the one now. about the magnetism. Yeah. And the, the Rex Research one is the David LaPointe primary field theory. Okay, and that you want that's the one you want in now, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, well, yeah. I'm a little confused on we'll, we'll talk they, about it in a minute. But they read differently, so I didn't know yeah. which one I was yeah. doing. I got confused. Help, help. Yeah. Uh <laughs> magnetism is like a calm pool of water when you've got one rock and drop it into the water. That rock goes down it cavitates the water as the water swings back in and fills that hole up. It forces water up into a big drop that comes way up above it, which then goes and splashes down and recreates the thing again. That's frequency. This field that they're talking about in in this magnetic video is the field created by one pebble when you throw a handful of rocks in there each one of those separate fields interacts with the other fields around it that's the real world what's it what he's showing in this video is in the perfect world with only one pebble just uh, so you'll know what one field is doing, you'll be able to figure out what the interaction between the other ones will be. So so it breaks it down to a single magnetic field. Yeah. It's basically, which is not something you experience in nature. Right. Not very often. When I open the um, primer fields part one, yeah, it's got a part two and a part three as well. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, Watch all three of those. I was surprised. Oh, hey, I like to listen to new stuff I've never heard before. That's a three-hour course that will just make you smart as a whip. Wow. Mm-hmm. I can hardly wait. Yeah. I've got a fan club that thinks I'm really slow and I need a lot of help. Oh, hey, those videos are neater than a pocket on a shirt. Well, will I be... So bright, my dad would call me son. Not I don't yet. Know about all that. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> don't get your hopes up. <laughs> wow. Back, back to the, back to the corner. Down boy. <laughs> guys are, guys are so mean. Okay, and then uh, after that, there was another link that I did make note of here, but. I didn't know there was a three. Well, see, one thing, I like things to go somewhere. You know, this one time, I don't always learn on the first the first note. Sometimes i got to hear the whole song to decide if I like it or not. Well, if you watch the video on the magnetism, mm-hmm. that will let you know pretty much what the field's doing. And then if you watch the primer field videos, that will show you an application for that. Well, you know, it just strikes so, me that when I look at things visually, right, that I've yeah. been convinced in, in my training, my br- upbringing, my teachings, how to interpret the shit that I see by other people, told me what to do. So what if I hadn't been instructed on how to see these things? What would have happened? 
then you wouldn't see the swastika as a German symbol. You would see it as a spark gap generator. Yeah, probably, huh? Because, oh, man, they demonized so many things that get, they mislead people and they take them down the wrong road. And yeah, they don't sir. know it. And even if you try to explain, it, it's a very personal thing, this uh, this side of electronics, electricity, uh, you know, yeah. thinking. Because <laughs> we're, we're just a bunch of juice, energy juice, right? Bouncing off each other like it's important. People make way too much of life. They can't just do the best that's for everybody and have some fun. Nah, they got to be greedy and build a chateau. <laughs> have slaves. You know, get some slaves out there to pick the cotton. Martha, I feel a hankering for beef. You know? That chateau yeah. should be our body. We We have the ability to correct everything in our body these days with frequency and with the proper fuel for our energy. Yeah. Wow. Somebody's See? phone wasn't on vibrate. Yeah, wow. <laughs> that vibrated me. <laughs> A little bit. Damn, I, yeah. was sh I was shaking in my chair when that thing was going on. <laughs> I, I'm going to mute it out for about five minutes. But, well, but you, you make me a cup, you, too, Rob. I'll take a turn yeah. when you get back. Okay. Okay, Larry. Our, our bodies are electrical engines. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so we're a motor, but we burn fuel. You have to burn the proper fuel. You can't run diesel in a gasoline engine. So you've got to burn the proper kind of fuel in order to maintain your body's health. And everybody can learn that. That should be taught in school, not that you've got to eat five pounds of bread a day. <laughs> taught in school. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, well, everybody's homeschooling now, so teach your kids right. Good luck with that. So few yeah, people no know doubt. the truth. Well, the last 40 years have hijacked all the good stuff and buried it. They replaced it with new and improved, baby. We're going to fix you right up. Well... Yeah. The older crowd, some of them fell for it. Now, I'm not, you know, because I'm in that older crowd now. So, wow. My generation fucked up. But whose didn't? <laughs> it's, a, it's not even a thing. It, it's uh, it's the society. Doing improved means that you have to have a special tool to, to work on it. It costs more, and it breaks quick. Ta-da. See, you know. But re you came from the time I came from where they were still building it to last. Yeah. Yeah, in yep. in my day, it was squeeze it out, use it up, fix it, or do without. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when you bumped somebody in the car, their their bumper was made of steel, too. So, clank. Yeah, it it what didn't do any damage to anything unless it was old chrome. Maybe it, it would scratch it or something. But yeah, you could you could hit a car at thirty five miles an hour and it'd scratch the bumper. Have you Quarter ever seen? Have you ever seen the link of Henry Ford beating on a on his hemp mobile with a mallet? Yes, yes. Did, didn't and even didn't break the paint. Problems. Nothing. Yeah. Well, then how did we get where we are now from there? We went backwards. and now Built-in obsolescence. Well, what was the attraction? I guess the attraction was price or convenience. It, uh, see, I was growing up through all that crap. And by the time 1980 hit and I was really kind of grown up enough to survive out there without you know other people helping me, it was over. Better living through chemistry is what happened. Mm. The chemical corporations yeah. learned what they could do with oil. Oh, man. And all the poisons they give us and fuel us uh -huh. with. And then when you tell somebody about it, they think you're a nut job. It's a beautiful game. Put that plastic bottle of water in the sunshine on your dashboard. Go ahead yeah. and drink that stuff. 
Ooh, wow, yeah, because it's got that lining in the inside that's chemical lining to protect the water. <laughs> yeah. They got mm-hmm. us all trapped with these fancy words. Yep. You know, and it, I guess it, it comes from uh, being able to push a button and talk to Larry in, in Missouri from Denmark that it would make us lazy. And I think Whoa. that uh, the laziness is its either a choice or you don't even know. You're so into it, you don't even know that's what's wrong. Sacrificing your health for convenience. Okay. And you don't know it. Ex- yeah, or maybe know it and don't give a shit one way or the other. Let life mm-hmm. do what life's going to do what life's going to do. And, well, hmm, is that selfish or is that just who gives a fuck? I mean, yeah. How do you, you can't spend all your time judging what other people think. <laughs> you never have time to think yourself. <laughs> but but we get this thing called a radio program where we got the luxury of judging what other people say and do and not having, they don't have a chance to defend themselves Because <laughs> yep. it's just me and you, right? So it's nice that we can get on the radio and talk about electricity. Because <laughs> I know this has got a lot more to do with things than I could ever explain. Well, this magnetic video, mm-hmm. and I'm still watching it. I'd love to watch this one. Uh, it It's what every single thing does. From, from atom size, from photon size, mm-hmm. all the way up to the entire universe... Everything is a toroidal field because everything is made up of what I call the Holy Trinity. First, you have vibration. That's any kind of movement. That's vibration. That creates electricity, and that creates a magnetic field. So you've got that three things in every single thing that there is. Now, and and all of those things you just mentioned, are they all relative to the size of the object that you yeah. speak? Okay, so like, even though an ant is really really small, or let's say an ant, so he's a mouse, something real. A, a mouse is a really small animal, and an elephant is a really really big animal. But if you compared the two of them together in consumption. In each of their lifetime, they'll both consume, if they live the average amount that that animal lives, they'll eat their own weight in food <laughs> oh, yeah. so, in so many cycles. It's like a math equation. Yeah, and, over and over again. And Okay, well, we're we're stuck in a loop in society of some kind where the bullshit con men are pitching science as a reality and they get the the press to go along with it and the public doesn't know the difference. Mm-hmm. Okay, otherwise... Lie to somebody enough times with the same lie and they'll believe it's true. That's propaganda 101. Well, I, right, but if you're involved in it on, on the victim level of the mentality... How could you recognize that? I, I, I don't. Say, I don't think I suffer from uh, the delusion of state is here to ha- help me. I don't think state gives a shit about me one way or the other, unless I'm giving them something, or I yeah, owe them all, something. all they want is somebody smart enough to push the button on the machine. Nah, I'll pass on that. And the benefits here are good. I, you know, if I would have pursued the Danish system, I would have achieved the Danish system. But I didn't come here to do that, so... (laughs) Even though I married into the the population, I didn't jump on the public uh, assistance and all that kind of... the What do you call them? The perks of society, of being a... Well, you're independently wealthy. You don't need that. No, 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 no. I'm perfectly not. The the world... (laughs) I just got this thing about um, the world will always provide if yeah. whatever you're yeah fuck all that if you if I wanted to chase money believe me I know a lot of ways to make money that's not what my life I don't I don't want to spend my time doing that 
I've never had a lot of money, but when I've needed it, it's always been there. Exactly. One way and how much, it always works out. How much is a lot anyway? I, mean, I don't, I've always thought about that. You know, yeah, really. how much is enough? I, I've got enough. Okay, that's a decision you make on your own. Just depends on what you're trying to do. Hey, to me, Rob. a lot of yeah, Rob. To me, a lot of money is having enough to pay all your bills with just a little bit left over. Comfort. Yeah. 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 And a bag of weed. That well. Not everybody indulges in the leaf, though, Rob. <laughs> you got to respect. Uh, I went out the other day. I was talking about it on my show the other night. I ran into to two of my buddies from Good town, idea. and we end up we end up smoking a spliff in a uh, at a table outside, and mm-hmm. where we always go any damn way. But because we're in a lockdown, the, the two of them are debating. Well, what if somebody gets you know pissed off because we're doing this? And he says, "What are they going to do? Call the cops? We're on lockdown, right? You know the voluntary lockdown thing." And the, there's no cops for like 20 months. So what are they going <laughs> to? Each of you use your own bowl. No, but they've got the local guys even thinking way the a way they would never think. I've been here yeah. for five years in this town. And that was the first time anybody ever said anything. We're going to smoke one outside. Okay, let's go blow it. Some, fucking roll it up and smoke it. And it's now, Nazi Germany. But it's not. It, it's the, just the threat. That, that's the beauty of this whole fucking thing. There's no physical proof to none of it. It's just manipulated information given to certain people. And some mm-hmm. people take it one way and some people take it another. Turn in your parents. Well, when when one guy looks over the other guy and says, who gives a fuck? Anyway, we're smoking a spliff. And, oh, yeah, that you know, it's gone from being nothing to being something again. And that was the point I was trying to get to. What yeah. nobody would ever say, we're saying. And it's, good God, shut the fuck up. What are you, a sissy? And you're going to call the police because we're smoking a spliff. Where were you in L.A.? <laughs> Well, some place it's not legal, you know, where they really matters, because you can get in a lot of trouble doing that. Did you know that? I know Rob knows it. I didn't know if you knew it. Let them let them show up. Do you have a stand on on cannabis one way or the other, Larry? Oh, absolutely. Well, I've been smoking pot that? since I was eleven years old. You dirty old bastard, you Larry the pothead. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. Wonderful. See? I, and I'll tell you, I haven't had a cold since I was a teenager. <laughs> or the flu. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the damn I don't get sick. Uh, <laughs> See? I tell, I, I was, when I was young, I was telling people, they go, why do you talk to these old fuckers? They go, well, how, how the hell did they get old? <laughs> My grandmother. I wanted to know. Uh, Right, I got yeah, I got weed when I was a teenager, but it was grown ups trying to, you know, show me things that other grown ups didn't want me to know. <laughs> it was a weird childhood. <laughs> so I, I had to not give them up as potheads and you know, my parents were anti weed. So I had to <laughs> live two different Two different people. It was the weirdest fucking thing. And it never came up in conversation. Well, it did later because I got arrested. <laughs> because the girl, the girl, but it was her, her car, her weed. She was driving me home. She's the one that parked the car where she parked it, not me. <laughs> right. So here I am, 14, get arrested for smoking pot. It was a big thing. Yeah. But. Yeah. But my the parents, devil's had, lettuce. They, if they had any any problem with it up to that point, they never said anything, and I was never accused of, hey, well, you, something wrong with you, boy. <laughs> you know all the stories you hear about weed. Yeah, I don't. People don't know the difference if I've been smoking or not. I've been. Hey, are smoking. you high? No, nah, I've been asked that when I'm yes, totally, sir. totally not stoned, and they go, hey, are you high? <laughs> 
the the secret to that is the very first day on the job, go in with your eyes bleeding. And that's what they think you'd look like normally. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't I don't think it does that to my eyes either. So when you show up not stunned, they wonder what the hell's wrong with you. <laughs> that's, oh, I just don't feel good. <laughs> have you ever have you ever used um the cannabis for a cocoa? No. No. Okay. Just well, okay. Well, they they make a cocoa out of the um, can out of the hash here, and it was like, wow. I call it coma cocoa. <laughs> I can't I can't drink a cup of it and stay awake for about maybe an hour. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> coma cocoa. It's like yeah. Coma cocoa. And I think I think also that if if you prefer the green and you smoke it. You'll never be an insomniac again. Oh, no. Now, are you one of the people that's afflicted by munchies, or did you go through, go through that stage and pass through it? I, yeah, I went through that stage for maybe a year. Oh, okay. But right. No, it doesn't bother me a bit. Uh, yeah. I have so much pain from the broken bones of my back that my stomach gets upset from it. And if I smoke a bowl, it calms that right out. And I don't smoke paper at all. I I quit paper when I was 25 years old, gave up cigarettes, went to a pipe, mm-hmm. and smoke out of a glass pipe. Oh. oh, hey, do you use the oil? I, I tried that... Uh, when when I hit something like that, uh, I can clear that bowl, and <laughs> that that just made me too high. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, smoke. Okay, the the dark that's, brown. That, yeah, that's the way I was taught to hit a bowl. It's like go ahead and hit it. It's not going to be around again for four or five people. Wow. Fill your mind. <laughs> Well, yeah, while the getting's good, because yeah. <laughs> the getting won't be good long. <laughs> well, yeah, I, was, I, I, was, long it. I was trying to bring up the CBD oil, but then you br- I remember this hash oil went from being a teenager. And I used was, to make that. You had to put it on a tinfoil and burn the opposite side, and it would. you just use a straw to inhale the smoke. Fuck, mm-hmm. that stuff, that was like coma cocoa. Mm-hmm. And still... All these stories I've ever heard, you know, people do all these crazy things when they're smoking. They're lying to you. You do the crazy things when you smoke and drink or smoke and something else. But yeah. S- yeah. smoking by itself is so it's so overrated, and it's got such a bad reputation, you know, and it's such a harmless um, thing. It's, oh, fuck. I think that... People, I'm just as crazy straight. I don't see either of you two as, you know, deranged in any way. You don't bother anyone. Crazy people, you know, they go out and they beat somebody to death with a hammer because it's Tuesday. No, that's, nah. You know, what we do is voice an opinion about stuff that other people don't believe. Which kind of can hit some people as violent. <laughs> <laughs> there are some sensitive little butterflies out there flopping around. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Because uh, yeah. I think, yeah, I think we're surrounded by a bunch of sissies. Right? Well, and it's, I, it's good to get older because that way you don't have to be politically correct. Oh, I never was, was any of that. Uh, yeah, I never was correct. anyway. Absolutely. But I, I was bringing up the CBD oil because I wanted to know if you tried any of the uh, remedies, if your state legalized it. If com- I, if I do smoker. CBD oil every day. Okay, there you go. But yeah, you, you I, I also, put a cold <laughs> copper under my tongue. And you also reminded me about smoking the ash oil. Wow, that shit was wicked. Oh, yeah, See, was good stuff. we survived all these horrible, you know, all these horrible things that everybody else was dodging and worrying about. And I, just, I survived it, metal toys. <laughs> See? <laughs> Remember lawn darts? I, I survived metal <laughs> yeah. We used to stand next to where it was supposed to fall, try to catch them out of the air. Hey, man. Hey, you got a fishing report, or is it just complaining? 
Or is there any it, fishing it's complaining this time? We, uh, we went out this week and practiced. Oh, well, cool. should I call that a fishing report anyway? And I'll just drop the your... G. Yeah, yeah really. Yeah. Okay. Fish, fish one, fisherman zero. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad. Damn, they got one of you, huh? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I fell down on the boat and bruised the back of my hand. Oh, oh no. Uh, it, old man syndrome, thin skin. Yeah. Ouch. What do uh, you do to remedy that kind of stuff? More potatoes? Uh, actually, I did that Sunday, and what is this, Thursday? Mm -hmm. It's completely healed. There's a little bit of a bump there where it was, and it's healed over completely. Oh. I healed up real quick. Yeah. That is quick, because I was clipping something, and I got a scratch, and it not a deep, deep or anything, just enough. And it's been like three or four days. So, yeah, this slowing down. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you about, right? So we're in the same room, me and the fly, okay? Now, the fly is existing at a different frequency than I am, right? Different vibration, or how, how do you explain it where it's proper? I got the idea, but I don't know how to put it back. That the two well, of us are in the same, we're in the same existence, but it's on a different something than I'm on. That's why it moves so fast, and it's so small. Yeah, it's it's got a multi-lens eye, and it can see things in different spectrum than you can, and it, like, can see air motion, the, the waves that your hand is putting oh, out. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> So to to catch a fly, you got to be where he's gonna be rather than where he is because he's not gonna be where he is by the time you get there. <laughs> you gotta lead him. Yeah, just hey, like hunting quail. The next superhero for TV will be the fly. Oh yeah, because they've run out. What have they got left? They've feminized all the guys. Oh, those, no didn't, yeah. those didn't go anywhere, so they're gonna have to Bunch come up with pansies. No, the the women gir, the the women superhero shows movies. Oh yeah, they, I see because it's funny how people behave is the opposite of the reality, right? Because in the animal kingdom, the male is the um, is the attractive one of the two. But in in human in the human world, the f women are supposed to be the flamboyant, you know, better looking ones in the world. But brought to you by religion. Thank you very much. Well, I don't know. I mean, I like I like the females and all that sort of thing, but it just doesn't seem like they're as dominant as they you know complain not to be. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been reading some weird shit on the internet. For the yeah, last what the hell you been reading, man? Haven't you? Haven't you ever gone? Oh, you, know, you don't spend any time over at Minds. dot com, do you? Uh, no, really. See, I I gave up on all the big social stuff. You guys use, use face. Well, Rob, Rob doesn't. No. Nope. Larry Larry uses Facebook. Okay. If you're going to use a fucking tool, I'm all for it. Use it. But I'm not a hypocrite, so I'm not going to use it just to impress you. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I only post stuff that I'm interested in. Well, you better be posting this here show, mister. I put a, I put a notice on both of my Facebook pages about this. Grim puts up a, a couple of thousand folks, so. Okay, well, Grim puts up a copy of where you can go to get the, you know, the show. And I'd like your, uh, the people that listen to you on your page to know it exists. Make sure they get a chance to hear what you got to say about all this stuff. Speaking of all this stuff, yeah, yeah. I want to go back to the Earth battery. Yeah. Uh oh. Okay. Um, so that so you've got your 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 two copper, two iron rods, ten feet apart, oriented north to south on the coppers, and that's putting out. Uh, 
and you put a coil on each one of those, does the coil need to be right there at the post, or can you run all the leads out to a and set them all next to each other? Oh yeah, you could you could put them all next to each other. Okay, so you got four coils. Yeah, tied build in. your box in the middle. Uh huh. Put them all in a box. Okay. How do I take that, the output from that, and run my two twenty volt, fifty amp, air conditioner? Okay, that's going to have to be through an inverter. You're going to power an inverter. Okay. Okay, that inverts DC to AC. Yeah, a transformer. Right. So, and and that's what you'll take off your air conditioner. Or actually, that's what you'll take off to feed your panel. Yeah, well, what if I just, I just all I want to do is pull my air conditioner leads off the panel and plug it into this thing. Why not pull the feed from the power company off your panel and feed your house? Well, we'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> okay. It takes. I have to convince the girlfriend that it works. Uh, that we'll have her convinced by the time we finish with you teaching you how to test it. Okay. Yeah. Just so. Keep- Keep her involved in the process. Maybe even ask her if she wants to come over and help you put some wire on the coil. Oh, God, no. (laughs) (laughs) Tell you what, some girls are a whole lot into that meticulous stuff. Uh, Yeah, well, yeah. I'm pretty sure she doesn't want anything to do with it. <laughs> well, at least keep her updated on what you're doing with it. Oh so no, she she she, she follows along with what I'm doing. I mean, she she thinks she's she crazy. crazy she, does. she saw me printing the donut. Well, she thought I was crazy long before this. <laughs> <laughs> she's been convinced of that for a long time. But uh, no, she's watched as I print the, printed the donut and. Uh, Ordering the wire and all that stuff. So she, I mean, she knows what I'm doing. She just, she's, uh, doesn't want to get in trouble with the power company. That's the main thing. Yeah. And you, yeah. That's, that's the only problem that we're going to face. Uh, yeah. So that's why I'm kind of, let's just take, you know, yeah, bits and pieces out of the equation. And so that way our electric bill is only $38 or whatever the minimum charge is, yeah. you know, and run all the heavy shit off of, off of my system. So, um, that's the theory behind that. Yeah. So you're not sending up any red flags. You're just not using very much electricity. <laughs> yeah. There's lots of things you can do to lower your electric bill. Have you balanced your panel yet? I haven't. You should. I That'll haven't. help. Um, well, our electric bill is is practically nothing so far. We haven't actually uh, had any uh, any heavy use on it yet. You must know to turn the lights out when you leave a room. Oh yeah, we we're very conscious of that kind of thing, and uh, you know we don't we have any we well hell we hadn't even turned the AC on yet this year. It hasn't been warm enough yet. Yeah, I've still got my heater on. Yeah, we're still running the heat, and. Hell, our heating bills are uh, under a hundred bucks a month. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we we live pretty frugally here. Just about have to these days. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's the one big thing that would make a big dent. Yeah. In the in the bill is just pull the air conditioner off the circuit and because everything else is just lights because I don't everything else that we have is gas That's well, when when you <laughs> get through with your coil 
irregardless of the, of the earth battery to run the house, you can have a self-powered refrigerator, freezer, anything. Right. And if you want to power the house, that's just a little bit bigger core coil or more of the little ones. Yeah. And it's all in how you wire them together. Right. Yeah, whether you want more voltage or more amperage. Well, these don't boost up the voltage, they boost up the amperage. And you can right. split you can split the voltage. Okay. Yeah, you can reduce the voltage by taking different circuits or you can have the the parallel voltage, whatever your source voltage is. Uh, yeah. But, well, my my big confusion is where do you how do you take three volts and turn it into one ten or two twenty through, through the inverter? And but you're not, not going to have just three volts. You're going to have probably nine or or ten volts out of this earth battery. Right, and that will give you uh, uh, ten. It'd be a hundred amps, and that's what will run the inverter. Right. So you are those? Need are the, is that something that's uh, off the shelf type thing, or do we have to build that? The inverter. That's off yeah. the shelf. So what type of inverter would I need? Um, like a standard 12 volt? Uh, uh, if, like yeah, if it's, a, if it's a 10, if you're getting 10 volts, that'll run a 12 volt inverter. If you're getting less than that, you'll want to go to a 6 volt inverter. Right, okay. So it just basically depends on how much power you're pulling out of the ground. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that is all directly proportionate to the type of soil you've got and the moisture content. Okay. Well, the way it's been raining, we got plenty of moisture here. Same here. But that means that the lake's full. Hey. hey. Yes, indeed. The shoreline cover still holds fish. Yeah. Well, it must suck to be a fish. I, I couldn't be a fish. Most of the lures I've got, I'd bite. <laughs> well, I'm not a big fisherman, but I've had a lot of opportunities and a, a lot of time spent on water, traveling mostly. But I don't. I've just never been a fisherman, so I, I can't. I can appreciate it, but because I like fish. <laughs> Fishing is your excuse, man. My, I don't know. I just. Don't have Fishing is the excuse. I like to ride in the boat and just sit there and watch things. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, but the fisher people catch fish. It really is a. It's well, like an art form in a sense because there's a, a way bonus. to do it wrong. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I've seen uh, that over my life, and then there's all the. You ever see that blooper guy that was he would have accidents on on boat with fishing equipment but it was all staged so it would look like you know it was real but it wasn't real i'll, I'll yeah, post it i'll post right. it to you guys sometime it was something search showed me yeah it'll be funny oh just fishing bloopers of probably <laughs> things that have happened to you because life isn't perfect like that but it's oh, yeah. fair and usually when you you just fall and you look like a dick doing it nobody's around to see it does asking uh Larry has an electric bill? He should he should be selling electricity back to the electric company. Uh actually my electric bill is like thirty it, dollars. Yeah. It's minimum it's minimum all the time. I gotta keep feeding them something. I turn on one lamp and that's it. <laughs> that okay, yeah. Yeah. Stay That's kinda, just to keep yeah. them off your back. Yeah. Yeah. Completely, yeah. Wow. What? See, it, that's I got this problem with living in deceit because of this. You know, if, if we could just be honest with each other all the time instead of living this 
Well, well we can be honest with each other. You just can't tell the state anything. <laughs> what, uh, yeah, well, if we could sell it back to them, we'd all be getting free power plus providing power for all the idiots that didn't want to make their own coil. Yeah. Right? Oh, and, well, you shouldn't say it like that, Larry. That's kind of unfair. Because there's well, people that are just... If you can do it, why not have it for free? Right, but if you can't, well, like say me. Well, yeah, okay. I, I don't. It's a, think, yeah, it's it's easier said than done. I don't think <laughs> I have the wherewithal. I don't think just anybody can build a coil. No, I could. I could. I mean, probably once you put out a step by step instruction manual with all the everything and no, hard slips no. and I'm still you know gonna go, I'm gonna still go with a you reach a lot more, but. No, you're well, gonna we'll, reach we'll make coils like for me. those folks that don't want to make them and sell those, but it, it's an easy thing, and with the 3D printed uh, ones that we've got now mm -hmm. with the ridge, yeah. you follow the line with your first one and put all of them right next to that. And yeah, it's speaking pretty of much, which, yes. Uh, my guy, uh, I talked to my guy yesterday about the... Uh, 18 inch coil and he's it ran into a roadblock on designing that so I don't have that coming now uh, um, the 18 inch coil would be an 8 inch circular segment uh, let's see 18 let's see. it'll be 8, eight sections eight. yeah eight, 8 sections yeah we got that far but it, the program he's using um uh, when he, when you create that section and you create two of them, they don't line up, and he hasn't figured out how to do it. He's he's still tinkering with it, but I mean, he's just doing it as a favor to me. So uh, uh, he's, but he kind of got stuck on that. So I don't know how. It's either that or buy a a bigger printer. <laughs> oh no. And I'm not going to spend two grand on a printer. <laughs> really, I wish I had it to do it. <laughs> well, you know what? This this is where networking comes in. Because somewhere, yeah. maybe you, you never know, maybe even listening to you on the radio, there might be somebody out there that wants to invest, for not for a return invest, but to make this freaking thing happen and be a part of it. Yeah. If I had the cash, I would. Well, but I'm just a poor guy. Well, I mean, Larry's already got the deal. I just, he's not releasing it. Oh, yeah, see, we, that's, oh, that's the problem. All this intellectual uh, property thing fight going on. Well, things are, going, things are going to change. We're we're writing the manuals and, and putting. Yeah, I, I didn't say it wouldn't happen. It's just not, not going to happen until they're ready to release it. Quickly. Yeah, it, yeah, it's got to be done safely. And that's that's our main thing. We've come a long way on the Faraday cage design. Uh, there's a new coil that's okay. Here we go. <clears throat> Hang on to your hats, boys. We're getting some cutting edge info now. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, Twelve circuit design, same spiral pattern. However, this wire, as it twists, lays up on its edge, creating a nine-wire deep fin 12 times in the vortex of the coil. And then it goes through the vortex, standing straight one on top of the other, and the twist lays it back down on the coil. That creates a screw type arrangement where the, the wire looks like the threads on a screw. Uh -huh. um, boy, howdy. This is a compression. This is an expansion. And this is a super magnification and rotation in the vortex. This particular coil it's what you use to grab to to make your uh, inertia free zone. Uh -huh. this, this coil is going to make your magnetic bubble. 
that keeps you safe, that captures the time and space that you are when you create the bubble inside the bubble. Uh, it, it's a it's a real good thing. It's also going to be an excellent electric furnace because of that magnetic field in the vortex. If you put an iron rod in it, it's going to just turn red almost instantly. Huh. So, so it's it's a, a multi-purpose again. They're all multi-purpose coils. Well, yeah, uh, there's there's always different yeah. uses based on input and and configuration and but and that's wire. The way, that's the latest Graham design. Our, our man in England, uh, and he knows very very little about electrical things, but he is a 3D printer program writer, and okay. the guy's a genius. He sees things in his head that, that I can't see yet. He sees in 3D. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, he's a, an excellent asset to the group, and he's come up with one, two, three, three new good designs that are functional for different purposes. Neat. Oh. What's his name? Uh, Graham. Uh, Graham? Hancock. Yeah. Right. He's from, I think, Somewhere close to London. Graham Tromans? Uh, has he got a gray beard? Uh, uh, this guy, I, I don't remember his last name. Let me look. Graham Tromans. Uh, 20 years working with uh, <laughs> 3D printing. Yeah, that's probably him. That was in 2012. That's yeah. 3D printers. Grab Ogan Live. Graham Truman. I'm trying to open the program now where his name is. I guess. Yeah. Flash. Got to keep it going. Yep. Once um, upon a time, there was a big monster. Hey, no. Uh, yeah, they were uh, calculating on an equation of some kind or another. I was typing that into the RLM chat. Frog just showed up. Hey, Frog. But, uh, uh, well, they've been doing a thing called Earth. Wait, I wrote it in the notes. So I don't say it all backwards like some kind of dip. They're doing uh, Earth Battery, and uh, Earth Battery 101, and it turned into Earth Battery to a 102, and then that turned into new designs and stuff. And uh, yeah. it seems that. Tell me, am I did we are we am I stalling or more or done? Ah, help you're me. done. Bye. The guy, the guy's name is Grand Sand Width. S A N D W I. T H. Graham or Grand? G R A M. G R A E M E. Graham. Graham. Say the last name again. S A N D W I T H. And with uh, Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, this man is in England. Uh, and shut down. Oh, and yeah, shut that's down. That's right, I forget yeah. about that. Oh, they're yeah. Locked down. Locked down. They're locked down. They're locked down. Yeah. Okay, high power electric connector. Which trans- yeah, okay, well, I'm not seeing anything come up. Yeah, so he I'm doesn't. Not, he's on Facebook. He, uh, he's not. Uh, he's not. 
active on the internet. Ah, that Much. could put a hitch in your program. Nice. Yeah, just a little bit. Anyway, that's cool though. Um, so, anyways, yeah, um, we're back to the drawing board on my uh, 18 inch coil design. Anyway, that was my point. Um, but if I can build what I need to build with these 8 inch coils, i.e., the earth battery, um, yeah, it's just say twice enough. as many. Yeah, or four times as many. And if you were to put an 18-inch coil on the top of each of those posts, you'd just get more power. Yeah, so, just more power. That's yeah. So this is like fractional reserve banking working for you. Absolutely. <laughs> it's the opposite of, you know, because <laughs> it, wow. There yeah, only the, a, fra- only the fraction is on the other side because we're pulling from an unlimited energy pool and we're only using a fraction of it. Yep. Well, yeah, and then plus people are drowning in debt with <laughs> all this garbage going on in the society. So maybe saving well, 10% on their electric bill doesn't turn them on anymore. <laughs> okay, we're yeah. we're not going to need coal. We're not going to need natural gas. Uh, there's always going to be a use for both of those. In fact, a natural gas car, if you had a car with a carburetor, all you'd have to do is change the jets on it. Yeah. But natural gas and and things like that are always going to be needed, but we can reduce the the need by a fraction of what they need now. If you all went to electric cars, every single car was electric, and you had to plug it in, how many more power companies would they have to build to to provide satisfy power that need? Yeah. yeah, that's not that's not right. That's not yeah. That's and not fixing any problems. It, it, yeah, it's not logical thinking. It's not sound logic. It's just shifting one problem into another problem. Yeah. So what we need, okay. You're still going to have to mine rare earths to get the magnets made. You're yeah. still going to have to mine copper to get the wire or whatever. You can make wire now out of nanotubes and, and graphene, yeah. nanocode them or graphene. And boom, there's power. You don't even have to mine anymore. That's that's burned green stuff. Yeah. Anything organic. organic. Yeah. So... Even bones. So there's, there are methods and and stuff that we can reduce the damage to nature, right? And that's what we should be doing. Get rid of the catalytic converters on automobiles. That produces so much sulfuric acid vapor that that's what's causing the acid rain in the world. It's not CO2. The plants need CO2 to live. They grow better with CO2. It's carbon monoxide, CO. Please get that right. If you don't know that, open any grade school chemistry book. Come on, Larry. That's so 2019 of you. It's it's not I climate. Know. It's not climate change anymore, Larry. Yeah, change, we're over change climate with, change. Yeah, we we've grown beyond all that nonsense. Now, hey, there is there is the good news, the silver lining in all this. The pollution has gone that way down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's with everybody staying home, all the all the businesses and factories shut down. The pollution has gone gone way down. Yeah. yeah. They gave the bankers four trillion dollars, and people wonder why the stock market's going up when nobody's working. <laughs> yeah, fucking magic. <laughs> what a bunch of idiots! So, sorry, if people, if you think I'm talking about you. <laughs> well, then on the other hand, if the footwear fits, flaunt it. Right. I think that if you're responsible for the shit that we're going through collectively right now, and you're willing to own it, you deserve all the shit thrown at you that I could find. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a negative Nelly, man. I'm telling you. So, 
when I was looking up those rife frequencies, that link I posted, it actually has a list of all the different ailments and stuff. And the link goes to an actual audio file that you can play for that frequency. Um, oh, excellent. And it, and it has one for the flu. So I'm going to post that. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So if you think you've gotten the flu, you can just play that there and and it'll, and if you've play. got if you've got a computer or a cell phone, you can get a free frequency generator on that phone or device, whatever. Oh yeah, do it. Well, these are just links to to YouTube files, and videos, but okay. it's just a tune. Well, shit, oh, I'll just I'll great. just open this one up and play it. Watch. I play that real loud and open the windows. That's the, that's the the frequency for curing the flu or fighting the flu, I guess. So that's what it sounds like. Did everybody keel over or something? Yep. Oh. yep. <laughs> I, I saw oh. a flu ad the other day to so take our medicine, and within ten days you'll be well again. That's yeah. about the normal course of a cold or a flu. Right? <laughs> Wait, so it's star of a cold and feet of fever, right? I have no idea. Oh, man. Just don't get that stuff. <sighs> Boy, yeah, I don't I don't deal with it. Juice, <laughs> we don't, get, we don't juice, get those things. Yeah, because Jews cure everything <laughs> with chicken soup and a $20 bill. Well, That's right. chicken soup and snuggle will help anybody. Yeah, but what about a the, snuggle, oh. what, or snuggle the fabric softener. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, guys, no, drink what, a lot what, of are, what are we really talking about here? <laughs> Talk about poison, jeez! Yeah. All, that, all that crap they put in cleaning products, you know, like a uh, laundry stuff and odd fruit, nah, passola. You know what they got I, out here in Denmark for the people like me that are fussy about shit like that? What? what? Neutral stuff that doesn't have um, colognes and added shit in there that you really don't Good. want. It's got the least Good. amount of crap that's legal to sell. So their yeah. their laws are, you know, they're just as fucked up as America in on most ways. But. The difference, and I will say this again, my friends, <laughs> it's the difference between rope and barbed wire. I, I've got the illusion of freedom. Mm -hmm. I don't feel strapped yeah. down. But I know I am. I mean, I'm not insane. I just make the best of it. <laughs> it's like, well, that's I, it. I can paint my prison any color I like. Thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> my wife said You're so. Free, you are free to move about within the confines of your prison. My wife said so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, she's got her limits. Cool. I can't go tripping over into Germany for a couple of days for no fucking reason. <laughs> like, Damn I, it. like I could when I met her. <laughs> right. So, ah, yeah. Life is fun. I enjoy. I enjoy. Things are changing quick. Yeah, just like this coil that you're making, right? All right, so you've had a few delays. Some people are, oh, yeah. being, some people are being shut down in their home and not allowed to go out by law, Rob. <laughs> you got it made. I'm a, <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I am very fortunate in, in my Big situation thing. here. Yeah, oh, yeah. So am I. <laughs> wow. And, and it can only be, how can it be worse? It can only be worse if I was where I'm from. I'm, I'm from L.A. <laughs> oh, God. It was wonderful when I started there. <laughs> Look what happened. Oh, well, yeah. 40 I, years ago, it was cool. But, yeah. No, it was 50 they years ago. That shit. Here's oh, 50 the, years ago. 50 years. And then I was only 10 when it was cool. So it was like, oh, yeah. man, I missed all the good shit. One of my friends lived in the apartment window that you can see above the Haight-Ashbury sign. Oh, wow. Right there on the corner. That's a real place. Yep. I lived in the same Francisco. Yeah, I made a I'm living sorry. as a messenger once. And, and it was a bike messenger job, but I would never use the bike. No? 
Well, it was delivering blueprints two blocks from where the you know, where the delivery place was to the businesses uh, that actually need. I could walk there and deliver shit just as fast as anybody could on a bike. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, sounds like a rough job, man. Uh, well, no, but it gave the other bike guys, hey, man, you're fucking it up around here for me. I like riding a bike. <laughs> <laughs> little, little, you know, uh, rebellious things I've done that stuck in memory because they were so much fun at the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah dumb things, but still, <laughs> they're mine, baby. Right, you can't right. have them. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're we're coming the up things to the they can't take away. We're coming up to the last five minutes of the show. And you guys okay. want to go over the notes, make sure I covered everything here, or do you just trust me? Sure. <laughs> I, I trust <laughs> I like this. Okay. I, uh, and, uh, who wants to take this to a closing? Because I'm just your host. I'll do well, a little bit. Y'all out there that's worried about this virus stuff, saline nasal spray kills viruses. This is supposed to be a virus. Try it out if you're worried about it. Don't don't get freaked out. This stuff will pass. Summer's coming. You're going to get better if you're sick now. You probably carry this coronavirus with you all your life anyway yeah. it's just they've found a way to bring it out <laughs> sit back if you're scared stay away from folks but don't be scared all the evil is created in your own mind it'll pass yep yep all you have to fear is fear itself <laughs> Hey, how am I doing? <laughs> I heard you laughing over there in the background. What are y'all laughing about? I want to laugh too. Uh, well, what's funny to me is that people were so tough two months ago. Uh huh. And now they're they're not so tough. <laughs> I mean, not all of them. There's still a lot of tough people left. But yeah. there are less of them in the forefront than I, I'm used to seeing. Let's say that. Yeah. But but the I live in a, a retirement village out here, so there's people older than me and I'm sixty, so you know, older than me is a bit. And they're out there walking around arm in arm, going where they're going and defying the laws of humanity with their fucking distance crap. Because they know about the distance thing in the grocery store. But they're, you're not going to make them do it in the street. No. Well, I'm just sticking people up. People are going to do what they want to do. Yeah, yeah, and I'm telling you, these older people, you can't do that to them. <laughs> they're not going. They're not going to put up with it. Nobody's going to have the nerve to yeah. try to enforce it on them. So. Well, yeah. uh, like like us, me and here. Um. We pretty much self-isolate anyway. <laughs> I mean, uh, the only thing I miss in this whole thing is going to my favorite restaurant for breakfast. You know, being able to go in and sit down and have breakfast. Yeah, I understand. Yep. Nothing else has changed in my life at all. <laughs> Same here. Same here. Well, mine is I like to have a beer at the bar. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, but... I mean, I was, I'm doing the same things. I'm still unpacking from moving. <laughs> <laughs> you lazy fuck. We're, what are we going to do? Well, I had to wait till I had to finish my kitchen cabinet so I could unpack all my kitchen stuff. <laughs> so I just finished those and now all the kitchen stuff's out of the way. Now I got 14 boxes of books to unpack. <laughs> you lucky bastard. You know how to read and everything. Yeah. Who knew? It's one of my favorite things to do as a child. Well, I like to tell you guys thanks a lot for, you know, doing this thing with me. Because yeah. as we go, this is an experiment in in itself, just to see what's going to happen from week to week. Yeah, it's kind of neat to, to to yeah get the progress. Although we didn't make any this week. <laughs> 
Uh, no, no, we covered a lot of good we, topics, and there's a lot of I good should have in the notes. Should have something uh, something exciting to report next show next week. Yeah, everything so, that we posted tonight was educational. It's it's yeah, good to know, yeah. even if you're not into this stuff, it's fun to look at. Yeah. I know there are, there are several science uh, geeks in, in the chat room, so uh, should be some good uh, tidbits. Just like Red Green says, remember, if your wife can't find you handsome, at least she can find you handy. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week, same bat time, same bat channel. Good night, everybody. Thanks, everyone.